learning about the guys that you have now that you're not quite at that halfway point of spring break? Yeah, uh, it's been it's been fun uh, to watch them because they're eager. Uh, they want to they want to learn. Uh, the uh, pace of practice, the style of practice, the structure of practice is different. Uh, so, they're, so they're learning, and I, and I have to be patient and understand that. But the guys are eager. Um, they like to compete. Uh, so, it's, uh, so that's been a good thing to, uh, to see. Uh, defensively, there's been a ton of energy. Uh, obviously, I know that, that uh, you know, kind of the, the pers- uh, perspective of the defense last year, but I tell you what, those guys have been impressive so far. Just you can tell Coach Rudd uh, coaches with a lot of energy. Uh, it's feeding, uh, the guys are feeding off of it. Um, offensively is, is a little bit tougher because there's a lot more details, you know, offensively, and uh, we don't have quite as many uh, offensive linemen as we would like. So from a depth standpoint, those guys are getting worn out uh, really quickly with the pace of practice. Uh, the backs today, I thought the backs ran hard. Uh, Mike was a was a, was a pleasant surprise. He's a guy that I've been challenging really, really hard in practice. Uh, very talented. Um, but has to have, has to improve his practice habits and uh, just his demeanor in practice. But today, uh, I guess when I guess he's a gamer, uh, so to speak. So when, the, when we got off the field, uh, I saw a couple runs that uh, that caught my attention. But you know, overall, it's a good group of guys. Uh, they're eager to learn. They come to work every single day, um, and they're uh, and they're learning how to strain and push themselves. In terms of installing things on That's both right. sides of the ball, how quickly has that process? You know, it's it's happening a little faster on defense, um, and and again, a lot of times on defense, you just got to get those guys lined up. You get them lined up, they have a chance. Offensive football, it's a lot of communication, and and uh, and Coach Rudd does a good job of of changing fronts. And um, anytime you move a defender, you know, five inches on the offensive line, all the calls change. And uh, with the depth issues that we have, we we don't have the continuity. So what's happening is it's just taking a little bit longer uh, for things to come together up front. Uh, not because it's no, they're not working hard and they don't want to it's just it's difficult and and you know to to be effective on offense it starts with the five guys up front and and we've had guys up and down with a couple of guys sick and out and uh, Charlie's down with a little bit right now with a high ankle sprain so uh, so we're just mixing and matching and it's tough on Brandon it's tough on the wide outs because they can't create their timing so offensively um, it's just a function of depth uh, more so than, than the guys not being able to uh, to grasp the install and then defensively they got more depth than we got um, and then they're able to to uh, uh, to get those guys uh, playing fast and, and moving around. When you look at where you started, is this where you would think your team would be six practices in the spring? Are you happy where they are? You know, I'm happy. You know, I was hoping that offensively uh, we'd be we'd be a little bit further ahead. Uh, but as I step back and I, and I look at the big picture, um, I'm not disappointed. Uh, because of the depth situation, I mean, we got we got ten linemen, and, and there's been days when we've had eight linemen, and so if you're running two groups, you need at least ten linemen. So that means guys are doing double duty. Uh, you got Leach is going from right tackle to left tackle to left guard to right guard. Um, Justice is playing center. He's playing guard. I mean, you got Devine's playing guard and tackle. Uh, and when you're install, installing new offense, new schemes, different calls, different verbiage, you know that's tough for those guys up front. That's right. Right. Uh, I, I, Ronnie was having the best up until he got hurt um, the other day in practice in our first one of our first live segments. Uh, he took a shot on his leg and uh, he'll be out for a little while. But he was having a really, really good uh, start to spring. Just very consistent workman, uh, workman like. Uh, is going to do what you ask him to do. Uh, Foston is 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 just trying to to to, to feel. The, the offense, you know, it's a little bit different uh, uh, outside zone, inside zone from three different alignments. You know, that's that's tough on the back. And, you know, Mike, as I said, I, I believe is the most talented of the group. Uh, but he, he he's starting to come on now. The first couple of days uh, we were on him pretty hard. Just it was just practice habits, the little things, uh, just trying to to go above and beyond. And that's what I'm trying to get uh, established with everybody that uh, whatever whatever the, the somebody else suggests, that's just a suggestion. Like that's not our standard. Our standard is set above what anybody else expects of us. So he's one guy that uh, that I'm just trying to pull through the knot hole uh, to get him, and he and he wants to, uh, but he's got to be consistent. In the grand scheme of things, yes, uh, in your offense, how important is it to have a running game you can count on? Oh, it's it's critical. 
I mean, it's it's critical, and uh, and and just we want to be balanced. And and again, sometimes that gets misinterpreted. Some people think well, you got to be 50-50 run to pass. No, that's not what we're saying when we say balance. Is that we're effective running the ball, and and sometimes that means you know three yards is an effective run. Uh, if you can if you can stay ahead of the chains, or you can convert a short yardage running the ball. Um, that's that's what we're trying to establish. And then just for 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 us offensively and from a team standpoint, being able to run the football kind of sets the tempo for the team. It, it forces the defense to practice against the run. And now they, they're developing that physical mindset. You have a physical mindset up front. Um, and then you have confidence that, that when it's time for – when the game's on the line, it's time for you to go run the football, that you can go convert whatever you need to, need to convert uh, running the football. So it's critical uh, to our success. With all the, trans, with the transfer portal and right. all the transfers, transfers, how much of that do you – how long do you accept that – that to go on and is this going to go daily changes? <laughs> so, so, so right now we're monitoring the, the transfer portal just like any, uh, any school is. Uh, you're starting to see this is the time of year. Uh, another wave of guys are starting to go in, uh, but we're not ready to, uh, to make any decisions on the transfer portal until we fully evaluate the guys that we have. Now, just uh, being, being transparent, the roster, you know, we got 50, 56, you know, scholarship guys right now. And then I think we got, you know, another, uh, last time I counted, I think I said we were going to get up to about 77 with the guys coming in. So we we'll still have, you know, uh, what, what would that be? That'd be eight spots, eight spots that we got to fill just because of attrition. Uh, so, so we're we're actively looking at it, but we're not we're not actively pursuing anybody right now because we do have some guys that are that are on the way that we think can help us. And uh, obviously, with Ronnie's situation, that you know that kind of changed things from the perspective of running back. If he's going to be out for an extended period of time, uh, you may have to uh, look at that. Um, so there's there's thing, there's conversations that we're having, but we're not actively recruiting any guys right now. We want to fully evaluate you know, the roster and then see what would be the best use of that. Because trying to establish a culture, you know, it's hard to it's hard to establish a culture if you're trying to bring in transfers that'll that'll just get here in the summer right before you start the season. You know, we're we're trying to to build the program with the guys that we have in house and then going forward we want to try and continue to build the program with uh, with high school guys, but understanding that in this day and age with uh, with attrition, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to, you know, be in the transfer uh, game, but I don't want to be a, a, a team that's, you know, constantly trying to get better through free agency. I want to build through the draft and then supplement the roster where you need to from a, uh, from a transfer standpoint. This is your, this is your second practice at Scott Stadium. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, so the first time um, it was pretty cool. Kind of, kind of sunk in like, like, man, wow, this is this is this is really happening. Uh, and then today, uh, you can see, uh, and, and that's why I told the guys, uh, you know, we're on sacred ground. Uh, there's a lot of former players that that got blood, sweat, and tears, equity in that field. And when we step on on the grass in Scott Stadium, there's a certain standard that we got to play to. So, uh, so it's really starting to settle in and and and, and become real uh, for me. Uh, when I stand out there and you see your team practicing in the stadium, and you got the music going, and you got some got some uh, uh, some recruits that they, they kind of make up your fan base uh, for practice. It was uh, it was pretty it was pretty cool today. So I had a moment. I had a moment where I just kind of stood down by the uh, scoreboard side and just kind of looked out and was like, man, this is uh, this is actually real. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon right and you know this 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 is a, a different spring than than let's say next spring uh, because you're you're installing the offense and, you, and you're trying to see what the guys are capable of um, you're trying to see what fits your personnel um, you're, you're exposing them to a huddle uh, where you know, you want to have that element of your offense, we may not be in the huddle a bunch, but you want to install that, and then you want to have your, you know, you want to have your your, your complementary plays from the huddle. Then each run scheme, you want to have your naked, your play passes, all those things off of it. So the volume, you know, right now um, is 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 diverse and a lot, but but once we get to uh, once we get to the season or game planning, you'll pare it down, and then you'll be able to pull from what you did in the spring or fall camp to be able to fit the defensive structure that you're uh, that you're going against. Yep. Chico Bennett was a guy that was at Georgia Tech yep. before this, and he got injured last year after transferring. Do you remember anything about him at Georgia Tech? I know Clemson played him a lot. Just kind of what have you seen? Yeah, I don't. I I can't say that I remember him from. Um, 
from Georgia Tech, but I tell you what, he's 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 flashed a little bit here of uh, this uh, uh, this spring. Uh, he's a guy that uh, has got got ability. Uh, he's got he's a, he's a high character young man. Uh, has great leadership qualities, and so it's good to see him have some success uh, on the field uh, thus far this uh, this spring. So we'll talk about this crowded wide receiver room a lot. Mm -hmm. Malachi Fields is a guy. Yeah. Who's a younger guy, a local guy too. Just what have you seen from him kind of going into that second year? Right, uh, man, he's pushing Lavelle, and and that's no secret. Everybody knows, and and uh, and it's been made known in front of the team that, that Malachi is pushing Lavelle, which is going to be good for Lavelle because it's going to make him better. Obviously, he's coming off of injury, and uh, he's still knocking the rust off. But what you're seeing is Malachi plays fast. Uh, he's a big physical guy. He's very conscientious. Uh, doesn't say a whole lot. He just uh, he just shows up uh, and make plays. So so I'm I'm very 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 uh, pleasantly pleased with. Uh, uh, with Malachi, and then when you have a, a combination of like him and Lavelle, and you can put them into the boundary, and then you throw Wicks over there, and you change up the speed, and that's probably what Brendan's talking about—the diversity you can put. You know, in this system, you can put guys wherever you want to put them to create matchups uh, and, and, and isolate, and then then obviously change up the uh, the personnel and the speed on uh, on different defenders. I know that there's a new uh, Taylor from South Carolina. A little mm -hmm. bit. What what was the determining? Right. So, you know, so as we were as we were constructing the uh, the staff, uh, you know, the question was who was going to coach quarterbacks because, you know, Des could easily coach uh, quarterbacks. And uh, we talked about it, but we, we felt like we needed to go get a young quarterback uh, guy um, that was a, that was a, an up and coming guy that was going to be very, very successful in the future. And, uh, and we brought in three guys. We interviewed three guys and uh, and he, you know, and he won the interview uh, process. And so it wasn't anything that was given to him, even though I have relationships with his dad. Dez has relationships with his dad. He earned the job. And what you like about Taylor is he's got a, a one, he's got the credibility as a player. And he was a really, really good player at App State. Uh, he comes from a coaching family, so you can see the pedigree. You can see the development. You can see the confidence uh, that he has. And, and just in the interview process, you could just see how he could command the room with the other coaches. And that's what you know, that's what the determining factor was. And so so initially, we thought about uh, Dez you know, possibly coaching quarterbacks and then bringing in somebody else to, uh, to coach the running backs and tight ends. Uh, but then as Dez thought about it more, he said he probably wanted to call it from the tight end position. So we said, let's go get a young quarterback guy uh, that could come in here and, and relate to Brennan, but then also provide us good stability going forward uh, with developing guys and going and recruiting quarterbacks. You mentioned Ronnie, mm -hmm. the guy who was injured. Anyone else that's um, for spring? Um, for spring, you know, just the guys that have been out already. Uh, uh, Logan's, you know, been out. Logan Taylor, he's still on. Uh, he's still trying to work back. Um, Wentz is still trying to work back. Um, Billy is still trying to work back. Uh, Jonas is still trying to work back. Bratton is still trying to work back. Uh, you know, several of those guys are, are out. Teeter on the offensive line. I talked about Sanker, Bratton, Dunkel, uh, Bill, Kemp, Cross. Um, and then you got Taylor and Wentz. Uh, they're, uh, they're, no, uh, they're no contact. And then, uh, you know, Bryce Carter and, and Burke, we're, we're working back into practice here pretty soon. Uh, but Ronnie's the latest addition to a guy that's going to be out. Uh, for the uh, for the remainder of spring. Anybody else pop in your head immediately just having a really good spring? Um, yeah. You know, uh, Lex Long showed up today at safety, made a couple plays. Uh, ben Smiley flashes. Uh, Fumui's been very solid. Uh, Bryce Carter is, uh, uh, not Bryce, but Jameer Carter's been disruptive uh, inside. Uh, Nick just does what Nick does, Nick Jackson. Um, Trying to think offensively, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah, because today was it was a little bit lopsided with the uh, with the work. Now to the offense, um, Leach. You know, Leach is a guy that's uh, that's that's caught my attention. Uh, um, trying to think of who else. How about the guy over the baseball part? Uh, Jay. Yeah, he he's caught my attention in baseball. I don't get I don't get him much for football, but you know, uh, that's that's how cool is that though. I mean, how 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 cool is that? I mean, how many how many people? I remember when I was growing up, that was like that was the thing. You had Dion, you had J Brian Jordan, you had all the Bo Jackson, you had all these guys. Uh, you know, Frank Thomas didn't do it at the pro level, but he did it in college, and uh, and so so I'm I'm actually excited for him and happy for him. And uh, I had a question that uh, uh, earlier in the week: What would happen if uh, if uh, if 
uh, UVA kept on winning and got all the way to the World Series, what, what would you do with Jay in football? I said, nothing. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna, he's gonna help them guys try and go win a championship if they're fortunate enough to get there. And I'm going to be right there in the stands with my little boys. We're going to be watching it. We're going we're gonna to go root uh, Coach O'Connor and those guys on. But, man, how impressive. Uh, are those guys and they're playing some really really good baseball and uh, just excited that that he's contributing you know and that's the biggest thing for me uh, there's a lot of guys that, that want to do both and, and and there's guys that don't want to want to run track and I have no problem with them uh, doing two sports just as long as they're contributing had a pretty good game against uh, Notre Dame yeah you seen that uh, I haven't mm -mm. so so I'm just uh football yeah football. Yeah. football oh you talking about the football when, yeah, oh you talking about when he when he came in I got you. Yeah. I got you. I thought you were talking about in baseball. I was like, I didn't know if they played Notre Dame yet. So, I got you. You've got time for a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. Defensively, you guys do that, that tackling circuit earlier. Yep. Have you seen any improvements there uh, tackling-wise? Today, when we, when we evaluate the film, we'll be able to see. I did see a couple of missed tackles uh, there, but but I also saw some some really good open field tackles. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's the name of the game, getting guys getting guys on the ground. In the big picture, though, mm -hmm. it, uh, are you seeing some strides there? Uh, just, just well, you know, with with the way with the way we're we're structured in practice, we don't get as much of the live the live contact stuff. So we're just now getting into the uh, to the portion of our of our spring where we got a lot more live work. So we'll go. Uh, today was half the practice. You could be live. When we come back on Monday, it's a full third day where we can't have any contact to the ground, and then we're going to scrimmage on a, uh, on next uh, on next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yep. Have you, have you, has anything popped out at you that you didn't expect? That's I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. You know, I think uh, I think the young corner, um, Simpkins, has, has has shown that he can he can help us. Very talented and uh, and he's and, he, and he's really engaged right now. Uh, I think before he was kind of on the fence, but now he's he's fully engaged, and you're starting to see his uh, his athleticism uh, take over. And um, I think James Jackson is a guy that's going that's going to help us. Um, and I tell you, Lorenz Terry has been has been a, been a guy that uh, has flashed a little bit that that can be somebody that's going to help us. And and Sue is one that I want to see a little bit more before I say because uh, he's been out with a little bit of sickness um, for a couple of practices. We just got him back today. Okay, thank you.